I was elated. You know, this is, you know, such a such a long fight and struggle, and and I I truly feel that it was the EPA's decision on their Title V permit, which really put the last hammer and 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 nail into Asarco's coffin, because, you know, the EPA clearly stated that. A sarco was worth nothing but scrap metal, and um, therefore they would have to go through their entire permit process altogether. And and so it was just it, it felt good to have some faith back in our government. I was in shock. I thought I'd be an old woman when that would happen. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Please pinch me." That's that's. Is it really true? I was so excited, and uh, uh, we celebrated for days. And then the reality hit. Is it really closed? Are they, you know, until I see those smokestacks come down, I'll always have this little concern. I think it says a lot for our community that we wanted this so bad and we would stick with it for this long. And then now that the community is so happy that it finally is closing, I think this is like a huge step for El Paso. Uh, you know, the first thought was uh, uh, victory. We won. Uh, it's done. Uh, uh, gladness, uh, 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 relief. Um, um, you know, just a real, you know, uh, fist pumping, thumbs up, uh, right on moment. We, I returned to El Paso about four and a half years ago, and uh, there was a rally going on, a march to City Hall, and uh, we jumped right in, my husband and I. By the way, this is our home, this is our backyard, and there's a Sarco where that we're within a mile of it. Can you imagine it being so close to the university, hospitals? And uh, to hear that it may possibly reopen really upset me and bothered me, and so uh, I felt it was really a bad idea for the community and for El Paso, so we, my husband and I got involved. And the personal thing was that um, uh, in my family there's no history of cancer, and my dad passed away when I was 14, and my mom got cancer two years later. And I guess my personal reasons why I got involved after researching this is my grandma had um, breast cancer, and she grew up in Smelter Town when she was like she lived there from when she was born to maybe like 20. Uh, but two cases of, fa of cancer in the very close family. Um, uh, you know, it, it, gets you, it gets you connected. And so um, I, decided, I decided that it wasn't acceptable to have a lead, um, a lead smelter in El Paso. Um, we read this book from this doctor called Dr. Deborah Davis. And she is doing um, like the main research on how um, pollution is a major um, contributor to breast cancer. On KTEP, there was an there was an um, call out to all El Pasoans to come and be a part of the contested case hearing that um, in which. The individuals who would like to, to either join the city or the Sierra Club as contested case members were um, asked to come down and join in the fight, and that's how I, I got involved, and that was in 2003. Being in the student government, I ran with a group that was kind of the environment's uh, advocates uh, on the side of the environment fighting for this. They'd been fighting for this uh, since before I joined the student government, and so I just kind of kept their fight going. My main contribution was um, taking a survey up and down Mesa here by UTEP at all the, uh, as many businesses as we could possibly hit. And uh, we took a survey and asked the businesses how they felt about Sarco reopening. And 85% of the ones we interviewed said they did not want Sarco to reopen. I became part of the university group that, um, that wanted to get as many people as possible aware of the situation and then on to Austin to present ourselves before the uh, TCEQ and declare our uh, insistence that the uh, Sarco closed down. Well, the first thing, of course, is clean it up. I mean, when Get the Lead Out had three goals, uh, stop the permit, get the site cleaned up, 
and make the workers who have been, whose health has been injured over the years made whole. Uh, we still have two of those to take care of. I teach eighth grade science now, and I have my science students, and we're all talking about this. They've read the articles in the newspaper, seen the pictures. They're doing posters right now for, you know, save the world, stop polluting, stop cutting down trees, and stuff like that. The idea that we have come up with uh, in my classroom, and the idea that we would be going with in this, is kind of like a big garden. Uh, I, I want to see the. Uh, I want to see everything demolished. I want to see it. Uh, see it carted out of there. It's a prime location, it's right on the river, it's a very historic uh, location. Um, it could be as beautiful as it is right now ugly. I want the tower to stay up so we can do base jumping off of it. Uh, a 90 story tower is very expensive and uh, there's, no, there's no reason to destroy it as long as it's not an environmental hazard. There's no reason to destroy it. Um, I think that uh, a circle was part of El Paso's history and uh, that, uh, that should not be forgotten. And I think that uh, base jumping would be a lot of fun. Before I, I try to peer into the future, I really want to look into the present. And I think our efforts really need to be focused on cleaning up, fully cleaning all the contamination in that particular site and taking care of uh, Exosarco employees that are terminally ill due to the exposure of that, of that plant's chemical and hazardous material. So my efforts and my concerns are really the present. Let's clean up a sarco, and then after that plan is, is, is um, cleaned up, then we can look at the future and decide what would be best for the land. I feel that now that a sarco is closed, El Paso is going to start thinking about um, businesses in the 21st century and bringing them here. So I feel like we're going to have more tech companies come about um, inspire more small business owners to take advantage of the property that's there and just bring up more new businesses. Solar energy would be the best. That would be my first choice for the site. I think that would, we could be the capital of uh, solar energy here. We have a lot of sun. So when you are out of power and your rights to a healthy life are being taken away, it feels like you have no power. And it feels like all the people around you are just trying to play games and trying to make a movement and that it'll never work. But it matters. And if you do it well, if you do it nonviolently, and you know what you're working for, you can make a difference.